According to the Rapa Nui traditions, a supernatural energy gave the Moai the power to walk on their own. As compelling as it sounds, researchers beg to differ. To honor the myth, scientists successfully attempted to walk the statues by tipping them side to side using ropes. Another experiment involved transporting a moai on a sled rolled over logs. Both methods work, but they have significant limitations. While moving the upright statues across flat ground would have been challenging, going up and down hills seems totally inconceivable. Experiments were carried out with the statues lying on their sides, which is the most logical solution. It seems like the simplest way, as the lower the center of gravity of an object being transported, the easier it is to move. Other techniques were tried on this hilly terrain, which involved transporting the statues horizontally. A wood lever system was tested to tip the statues and then pull them with ropes. In another test, the statues were laid on a wooden V-shaped frame and towed with ropes over log rails. It's likely the Rapa Nui people used both methods. We still don't understand exactly how the statues were transported. But no matter which technique was used, once they arrived at the base of the Ahu, these giants still had to be hoisted onto their altars. Archaeologists tested a method described by Rapa Nui descendants. Using two large wooden levers, the statue is lifted from one end and then from the other as stones are progressively slid beneath it. This slow tipping back and forth is repeated until the moai reaches the top of its pedestal. Then the work continues from the front only as it is slowly straightened to a 45 degree angle. That's when ropes are slid around the statue's neck and head to straighten it, little by little, by sliding more rocks beneath its body. Once the moai is completely upright, the ramp of stones is removed. This technique takes a fair amount of time, but it doesn't take months. It can be done in two or three weeks, and it seems logical in many ways. First, it corresponds to tools they had available, as there were no hoisting machines back then. It also allowed them to work slowly enough to avoid damaging the tuff, which could have split at any moment. The rock is essentially compressed volcanic ash. This technique is hence in line with the resources they had and their need to be careful with the stones they were moving. Once the moai were positioned on the ahu, the Rapa Nui's job wasn't quite finished. They still had to add a few details to make the statues worthy of their ancestors. The Rapa Nui decorated these giants using petroglyphs, drawings carved into the stones that resemble tattoos. Archaeologists believe the petroglyphs weren't carved until the moai had been set in place a sort of final flourish by the Rapa Nui sculptors. On some moai, the Rapa Nui also added a pukao, a sort of red hat on the tops of their heads. The pukao were carved out of red scoria, a rock that's found in a volcano on the south side of the island. The ancient Rapa Nui people did not have hats like that. But uh, early European visitors saw people that had uh, long hair tied on top of the head, and they saw people with red hair that was obviously dyed red with uh, red ochre, some kind of a clay that you can find. So that, that kind of, of hairstyle, uh, it's most likely what it represents. With their backs to the sea and their gaze towards the land, 
these symbolic ancestors cast their sights towards the younger generations. This is how the Moai could pass on their energy and sacred powers.